Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation on the emphasis on fun in educational escape rooms. Sorry, my camera doesn't seem to be working at the moment. Just let me... Steve. Hello? Hello? Yes, and who are you? I'm you, but with a processed voice that makes me sound like a hoodie from a cybersecurity presentation. So I'm talking to myself again. And budgetary restrictions. I am here with your mission. I was already starting my mission. You have 20 minutes. 19 minutes. To escape this potentially embarrassing presentation on why fun is one of the keys to a successful educational escape room. So not forced fun like this contrived opening then. Can you do it and beat the clock? If I can start now. Remember, Steve, humour is subjective. Yes, I'm guessing that's what people watching this video are thinking right now. Good luck. Don't mess it up. <laughs> Thanks. Right, hello again, everyone. And yes, while indeed humour is subjective, what I'm going to be sharing with you today are the learnings gathered from experience in creating and running fun educational escape rooms in the workplace at commercial organizations. So many thanks for watching this presentation and a warm welcome. I'm Steve Phillips, co-founder of Escapism Learning, a company that specializes in this area. And I'll be sharing some insight on why the company was started, what we've been doing, including our work on cybersecurity escape rooms and the reaction and impact to them. Now, many of us I'm guessing will have joined today's brilliant event because we see the concept of escape rooms really moving the dial in stimulating players into truly learning by increasing the amount of information they retain for longer than they would through more traditional learning methods. We had fun is the most common line of feedback we've had. And if you've been creating or running escape rooms and has been touched on in other talks today, you've maybe had that feedback too. And this aspect of fun is very much the focus of what I'm sharing with you today. Why introducing fun elements has made for an experience that's had significant impact on information retention. Now, at this point, a disclosure, I'm no researcher in this field by any stretch. I should have maybe paid more attention at school. Maybe an escape room would have helped me back then. My observations in this presentation are largely born from on the job experience. So just some background quickly. Um, I've been working in communications, training and awareness in one form or another for many years. And the last 10 years have been spent within large commercial organizations and along with my escapism learning colleagues, educating on cybersecurity in places where people don't have a lot of time, everything has to be done yesterday, and where it's a challenge to cut through all the other messages flying around the organization to deliver your crucial messages in keeping people, data, and companies safe. Places where annual mandatory training and internal communications campaigns are the norm, and training completion rates are the only things that matter to say we've been trained. Now, over the years, to us, it's became clear that you need much more to make a difference so people truly learn. You need to immerse people in the subject, get them to make decisions and learn from them. Get them excited about elements of the more dry subjects, such as reading a cybersecurity policy, which can and indeed must be done. It was during a period of working in the TV industry in 2019 that the three of us pictured here, Mira Meta, Bob Bryden and myself, along with an amazing band of creatives, met and felt we'd hit on something when we created Corrupted, the cyber escape room for ITV. Now, even in 2019, cyber escape rooms were not new. Using this format to highlight core topics such as phishing, social media safety and protecting your passwords certainly made cybersecurity a little more memorable, but it was only deployed during awareness months or weeks. Um, so blink and you'll miss it. With Corrupted, we felt it should be the awareness program all year round and not just uh, the brief transient experience that it was in the main. Additionally, a lot of cyber escape rooms were being delivered with a narrative that the security industry has often employed of dimly lit rooms with hackers wearing hoodies in the matrix as kind of their go to imagery. So overall, there are a couple of challenges that we found with this approach. First of all, the narrative of fear in training and awareness, uh, including through a lot of escape rooms, can sometimes be counterproductive, resulting in people being so scared uh, they don't want to report any kind of cyber incident for fear of something happening to them, recrimination or whatever it might be. Secondly, 
it's transient. Cyber escape rooms uh, are seen as a gimmick. Uh, a large truck parked outside an office building for a week and that's it. Um, a fun day then quickly disappears from memory. And cutting to the chase here, this is where Mirrors, Bob's and my work at ITV and then escapism learning after that uh, really began. So here's what we've been doing to try and increase information retention and influence behavior change. And it's not just about the product. We've worked under two guiding principles. The first one is discovery giving people an experience where they don't need to have any prior knowledge of cybersecurity, but instead giving them a set of lateral thinking challenges that using everyday objects as an analogy for cyber threats. The aim here is to remove as many barriers to entry for a potentially complex subject as possible. By discovering, you're already engaged and retaining knowledge without even knowing it. The second is storytelling to really bring people on the journey with you we found it key that you don't just set these challenges as a series of separate puzzles but rather as a story where one puzzle leads on to the next with a goal at the end and this is perfect for the escape room format of course combining these two principles we found it gives the feel of a game being played in a truly immersive environment where simple lateral problem solving and players invested in the story increases the enjoyment and uh, creates a positive and much more lasting memory after the experience. So based on what we've been developing, at this point, I'd like to show you one of our escape rooms. This is Beat the Hacker. Uh, this is a four minute demonstration uh, that we show to potential uh, clients. And then we'll go over why it was designed and built in the way it was to appeal to employees in the commercial world. I won't say any more because I kind of want you to discover uh, as we go through. Hello and welcome to Beat the Hacker. This is an immersive and customizable physical escape experience pitting you against the clock to stop evil hacker Filippo Fish from leaking your top secret documents. It can be played individually or within a team. The game covers the key topics of brute forcing and wider password security, encryption, phishing, smishing, and social media safety and social engineering. You play using a combination of physical props guided by an online app. Here's what happens in the game, which begins with Philip issuing a threat followed by your helping hand in the shape of Ivana Wynn. You're in trouble. Big trouble. Here's the deal. I've hacked you and your network. I've got all of your top secret project files and you're not getting them back until you paid me a million pounds in Bitcoin or solve my challenges. Let's see if you can stop me. I'll give you 15 minutes, enough time for a power nap before I wreak more havoc on the world. Good luck. <laughs> I don't mean that. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, thank goodness. I'm Ivana Wynn of the Cyber Defence League. I'm speaking to you from our headquarters. As you've just found out, Philippa Fish has blocked access to your files and we need to stop him to avoid paying that ransom. There's a big box in front of you which has clues inside. You need to get into the box, but we don't know the combination. We've already figured out some of the digits for you. Maybe you can use some of your cyber skills and brute force your way into the box by guessing the code. Hackers use this method to guess passwords. It might work here too. Maybe there's some information in front of you that could help. I'll be here to help you along the way. So your first task is related to password protection where you had to brute force your way into the box. And no, by brute force we don't mean smash your way in. You're presented with a padlock and you need to find the right combination to open the box. There are two of the numbers already on the computer screen. You just need the last four digits and this is where you use the magazine prop to help you. The second task is on encryption. There are pieces of a jigsaw and once these pieces have been put together, you shine the UV torch on the finished puzzle and you can see some letters appear. You're also told that A equals D. Using the Caesar cipher wheel, you set the outer ring A to equal the inner ring D, and then by translating the letters that are on the puzzle pieces, you'll get the answer, which is cyber. Next is social media safety, and inside the photo album, you'll find some social media posts. 
Using these posts, you need to answer the questions on the app to secure your account. When you've typed in the correct answer, the box goes green, and if it's wrong, it goes red. You're then onto the final task on phishing. Once you've grabbed the black document case and opened using the code given on the video, you'll find a tablet with some messages that have popped up. You must decide which ones are safe or malicious by clicking the corresponding button featured just below the message. The app will update automatically as you're playing. Once you've got through these messages, you've completed the final task. But wait, there's another box covered with stickers which contain some prizes. This option can be removed of course, we've included it as an option here that you might want. Finally, you're given your team time which has been entered into a league table. Beat the Hacker is heavily customizable to fit your company's tone, branding and specific messages. You can have anyone you like to play the video roles of the Hacker and Nirvana win, such as your CISO. The clues and games themselves can also be customised to ensure the players know the training is coming from you and not us. Many thanks and good luck beating the hacker. So thanks for watching that demonstration of uh, Beat the Hacker. Hopefully the game was explanatory to you from the props and the app and so on. Now, the approach we took to building Beat the Hacker was really based on five key learnings that we had needed in order to build an experience for the corporate world. First of all, Go to where the people are, experiences that are designed to travel. In the corporate world, build it and they will come just doesn't exist. People don't have the time outside of their core job roles. So we created the means to dress up any room as an escape room. The second point is fun first, core message second. Now we found that after playing the game, the adrenaline rushing players were much more open to wanting to know what they just done and the post-game debrief recaps and relates the puzzles to the learnings that you need them to know. Thirdly, you must keep it short. Again, like I mentioned before, people don't have the time. 20 minutes on average for an escape room uh, in the corporate world. Certainly nothing like an hour where people don't have a lot of time. Uh, so you have to make sure that every word really counts. Fourthly, create a low barrier to entry. Uh, use objects that are kind of every day people use them all the time that are analogous to cyber security five is tone now cyber security awareness and communications campaigns have generally been associated as i mentioned before with that faceless hacker in the hoodie hunched over a computer being showered with noughts and ones when in reality a hacker could be someone on the bus someone sat next to you at work it could even be someone watching this right now i'm sure that isn't the case of course and the last point is customization. Now, this is really key to building an impactful experience. Try to find every possible element that will bring the experience closer to the culture of the environment that it's being placed in. As you saw in the video there, uh, you can have anyone playing the role of the hacker or the helper. And it really does make a difference if people go, oh, I know that person actually, and it creates that much more fun. But how else can you create genuine enjoyment that will make it a truly memorable experience? Well, first of all, there's time pressure. Now, this doesn't work for everyone, but introducing an escape room countdown heightens the excitement and should a team get closer to achieving the fastest time or only has a minute to go, it creates a genuine adrenaline-inducing experience. There's competitions. Having prizes for the fastest time promotes friendly competition between teams within a department um, and influences how a successful team can work together. But most can't be top of the league. So introducing prizes for other competitions peripheral to the core escape game can also work. So, for example, prizes for the best team name. And believe me, down the years, we've had some inspired ideas. Miley Virus, Jean-Claude Van Spam, always look on the bright side of life to name three. Um, alongside the competition, maybe for the best team photo, it's getting some comedy disguises, some inflatables to hand. All of these add to the enjoyment and the fun as well. One practice we used to employ with the team photo was to have the photo embedded on a template that summarized the key learnings of the escape room. And that stayed on people's desks for months afterwards, a constant reminder. I remember walking through the office a couple of years after our first escape room launched to still see kind of faded photos on desks. It's that thing in the corner of your eye that keeps pumping out that message subliminally. 
And then there's the promotion. How do you get people through the door to sign up? And that is a key thing as well. The product on its own, and so many people do this, just sell you the product, but don't give you any support or maybe advice on how to embed it in there. So and supporting with pre-promotion, give this thing a brand of all of its own, make it look like a really cool game. Uh, generate groundswell by pitching it as a game first, then before the learning experience. And that can really help drive signups with people thinking it's not forced corporate fun. Um, actually, here's an example from a recent run of Beat the Hacker at Toyota for example, and rooms were booked out here. And this is a sort of mini trailer we put out for them. You're in trouble, big trouble. I've hatched you and your network. No time to lose. There is a countdown clock at the top right hand corner. So to the outcomes of these cyber escape rooms. Now over the years, we've seen consistent positive outcomes from our experiences the most important of all does it work does it change in this case positive online behavior and cyber security now as an example at one company before the escape room was launched that we launched for them a successful identification of a phishing email was a real issue in fact it was as, as low as 30 percent after the escape room that rose to 85 percent secondly is information retention now giving people as good a time as possible with the escape room and tying that experience into the core educational messages has led to positive upticks in metrics based on what you needed them to learn a lot of our feedback months even years later was along the lines of i remember doing that escape room or followed by a learning quote from the game, such as, yes, I've got to change my password to a passphrase, which was constantly drummed in during the course of the experience. Thirdly, it's an opportunity, a really great opportunity, certainly for information security teams or cyber security teams to generate increased traffic to their intranet site, where all the more considered to be dry stuff is on there, but you can get them onto that site really, really easily. And that's a huge challenge for any team and an internal business uh, is getting to reach their whole employee base because I can't remember anyone ever saying to me, I'm going to surf the intranet. You have to drive them there. And we made one change to our intranet at the time, many years ago, um, placing the escape room league table on the home page so that if you want to see where you were on the league table, where you top, you had to go to that information security page. Um, and that drove traffic up to the point where it was the second most visited site after the main homepage. And once they're on there, you can direct people to all the other content you need them to see. One really great thing actually was a side effect of team bonding. Uh, so the feedback we have was to the degree which players found they were bonding much more closely with their colleagues through the escape room. This led in some cases to the virality of an experience so after the Big Bang internal communications launch, it was word of mouth because the experience was that so enjoyable that actually it drove up signups from those who already played, telling people who hadn't played yet how good a time they had. So in conclusion, combining all the elements of fun from the content, tone and delivery of the core escape room combined with the peripheral additions such as competition, makes for a memorable experience that really does stay around in your head and the educational messages are attached to that memory finally i'll finish by saying that these are the findings of the majority of our escape rooms and of course there's no silver bullet that will get you to a hundred percent however this approach to learning in the workplace has had significant impact and now is the time to make this the norm alongside traditional learning I hear the sound of a door being unlocked, so it's my turn to exit the room. But if you want any more information uh, on the experiences and approach I've just set out, uh, you can find it at our site at escapismlearning.com. Many thanks for your time, and I look forward to taking your questions.